My name is Russell. I'm a native interpreter here at Jamestown Settlement. I work here in the Paspahe town site, and today we'll be covering the Palatin longbow, which would be used here in what the Palatin would call Senecumaca, or what we call today Virginia. So today we're going to talk about the Palatan longbow, or as the Palatan would call it, a top in their traditional language here. And we're going to go over the basics of how it's made, the fact that it's a fairly simple and effective weapon, some variation in the different bows of Tsena Komaka, and then we'll go into some of the arrows and the use of the weapon. But to start off, what we're talking about here is this nice simple longbow here. It gets both its name and its power from its length. So you're going to see the bows traditionally be roughly the height of the archer or the man shooting it. it might be a little bit taller in some cases. We're going to have four primary woods that we know of traditionally used for these. Hickory, which is actually a Palatin word, mulberry, different types of oak, primarily reds, and also black locust being mentioned as a favorite amongst the Palatin bow makers. And so you might have a five to six or so foot bow. Generally, following one grain of wood, so the actual bark would be out here on the face of the bow originally. The heartwood is going to be in this direction. It's going to lay down those growth rings nice and even. Your twine or string here is going to be out of one of three things primarily. Tendon, leather, or in this case, gut, the intestine from different animals. You'll see no sight or shelf. Primarily you're shooting right off of your own knuckles. And then some fairly simple square or even cut in or sloped knocks. And so bows like this are going to be drawing as little as 45 pounds or so in some cases and arguably as much as 100 depending on the wood and the bow maker. So basics of the Palatin longbow. Palatin people are going to start training with one, mostly the boys, at about five or six years old. Small little version getting stronger bows and better arrows as they age up. And by the time they're adults around 16 or so, the Palatin boys are expected to hunt, fish, and go to war with a bow like this. And they're gonna be making their own as well. The English colonists write with uh, some pretty decent respect for Palatin archery. One of them in later days writes that I imagine the world hath no better marksman with the bow and the arrow. That they shoot the birds from the air. He says the beasts as they run and fish as they swim. With such a strength, he says, I saw them shoot one of our unarmored men clean through, nailing his arms down to his sides. He was most impressed, however, that a boy of theirs, he says, no more than 12 or 13, killed a bird with his arrow in my sight. So that is a constant practice from a young age and a tremendous amount of skill. Other English accounts reference the men hitting level or near their mark at 40 yards reliably, hitting their best random shots at 120 or so. And even in a test, piercing an Englishman's shield, although he says our pistols will not do the same. The bow, you'll see versions like mine, which is fairly flat here, a little bit rounded in profile. You'll see others that are true flat bows, like this red oak one here. You can see is flat across the way. A little different design than an English style longbow. And then you might even see some variations like this with a wide limb, oftentimes referred to as a Sudbury style bow off of a specific example that was taken from the man. And to go with that bow, you're going to need a host of arrows. And they are going to come in a whole variety of different uh, sizes and points and all, but we'll go over some of the very basics. Simple blunted and sharpened points commonly for squirrels, rabbits, and small stuff. You'll move into spo uh, bone and stingray spines and gar scales and antler for fish, birds, medium game, maybe even warfare. And then for big game, you're going to see these nice stone triangular points, generally no larger than this. Deer, bear, wolves, and mountain lions, people you don't like, stuff like that, are going to take down with this type of arrow. And these arrows are going to function specifically, these nice stone pointed ones, pretty effectively at uh, bringing down large game because these nice teeth along the edge of the point and the fact that the materials, the flints and jaspers that these points are made out of, quartz and rhyolite, can be finer than a steel edge. So once they bury in, any movement 
of the prey or the enemy is going to cause this to rock around like a loose saw blade. So the Palatin men, the hunters and warriors are going to be pretty effective at using these to bring down just about anything out in the woods of Virginia at the time. And then as far as the actual carrying of the arrows on your person, there's likely going to be several different methods. You can see this quiver I have slung across my hip or my belt line here allows for me to draw the arrows from the waistline and use them as so. You might see them stuck into the belt or commonly even held in the hand of the archer on uh, their shooting hand or on the bow. And then certain quivers, um, like this one, which is a copy of one recovered from Virginia in this time period, uh, may be a little bit more or an ornate or fashionable, depending on who's making it. But that is the very basics of Palatine style longbow. So in the actual use of the longbow, you're going to see the string here, the knock of the arrow. It's going to be clipped right onto the string like so, and with a little bit of tension, it's going to be held in place. You can see the actual knocks of the arrow, that little gap at the back allow you to do that to keep it in place. Some of the traditional knocks for many eastern woodland tribes are going to be fairly shallow, so it's going to require a good bit of tension actually on the string, keeping the arrow in place until it's meant to be drawn and fired. Thanks for watching our video today. I hope you enjoyed a little bit about the Powhatan longbow. Be on the lookout for other topics about Powhatan native life and other videos to come. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.